Hello there, Author Tube World. We're going to have a reading from the book of Cretans today. A book that I wrote. We're going to read a few lyrics as well. I'll try to keep this at 10 minutes or less. 10 and a half is fine. Okay. Tomorrow's my birthday. But I don't celebrate my birthday so much anymore. I celebrate the last day. Of the previous year, which is today. Okay. I've also agreed with uh, someone else. At this age, we go in fives now. As far as when we get together and really try to party and stuff like that once you once you hit 40 which i'm at least 40 <laughs> we're going fives now so 40 45 50 etc then you know hey when you turn 50 we're gonna do something special but oh you're somewhere in between 45 and 50 not so much <clears throat> this book i wrote right here Cretans. We're going to have a reading from it. I was watching the author 2 video and uh, someone asked this girl about what, what, what did she think about having lyrics in, you know, creative writing. And I think she pretty much said she doesn't usually put poetry or uh, lyrics, but I, I do a lot. <laughs> and, and there's a a group of people called the contrarians of my book and they reference lyrics a lot and there's a reason for it there's a reason for what i do over here we have lyrics of simon garfunkel and a couple of others so let's start there let's start with the lyrics before we do the reading from the book of cretans i want to start doing readings for my books i really do just to let you know what led up to that, you know, and what the inspiration is. And uh, some people like to know the magic tricks, if there's any magic to it at all. And some people don't. Some people don't like spoilers. Some people do like spoilers. So, this is from Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, this is not. Simon Garfunkel's next. Um, this is from Marvin Gaye. Okay, this talk today is going to center around the grapevine. Okay. Ooh, I bet you're wondering how I knew about your plans to make me blue with some other guy you knew before. Between the two of us guys, you know, I loved you more. It took me by surprise, I must say, when I found out yesterday. Don't you know that I heard it through the grapevine? Not much longer would you be mine. Ooh, I heard it through the grapevine. I'm just about to lose my mind. Today's grapevine is insane. This is going to go to my Homer Cocktail 49 channel. And I like to wear a mask. I like to be silly. I have a Viking hat that I've worn on my videos before in another channel. But this is hypothetical. Let's suppose I'm wearing my Viking hat right now. Tomorrow at work... What if they just start talking about the Minnesota Vikings all of a sudden, right? Um, is this a coincidence? And I was doing a video last night. I might post it. I might not. But detectives, from what I heard, they don't believe anything's a coincidence. Anything's possible evidence. There's circumstantial stuff going on there. This one's actually from Nirvana, then we'll get to Simon the Garfunkel. We passed upon the stairs, we spoke in walls and web. Although I wasn't there, he said I was his friend, which came as a surprise. I spoke into his eyes, I thought you died a long, long time ago. Blah, blah, blah. This is The Man Who Sold the World, originally by David Bowie. And I'm not sure if this is going to show because I have the camera pointed toward me. So when I point it towards the screen, 
you know, it might not uh, register. I'm not really sure. Is it focusing? Because I can't see it. I'm holding it towards the ground. But I'm hoping it shows there. There's a reason I show it. There's a uh, funny videos called Misheard Lyrics. Yellow Leadvetter from Pearl Jam is hilarious if you find that on YouTube. Hilarious. But some lyrics cite this song as we spoke in was and when. That's never the way I heard it. That's never way the, the way I understood it. We spoke in walls and web. Okay? We, we, we talk a lot in indirect language. I talked about this in another video. So Simon Garfunkel is going to punctuate this, I hope, just a little bit. Okay. From the sound of silence. And the sign said, the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls and tenement halls. This is graffiti from what I took a history of rock and roll class when I was in community college. And the interpretation for these lyrics is about, okay, the words of the prophets are written on subway walls and tenement halls. This is graffiti sprayed in the slums, in the subway halls, etc. And you need to pay attention to poor people was what the teacher said the interpretation was. And it made sense. But we spoke in walls and web. So this is the way people talk to each other. Everything's not always direct. So this is about the grapevine. And I've gone through this for 20 years, ever since AOL's been here in the late 90s. Where it's a nonstop twilight zone. And for the older people, they don't understand it. For example, if I was wearing my Viking hat right now, and out of nowhere, everyone's talking about the Vikings. And, hey, there's no reason to talk about them. They had an average off-season, no blockbuster trades or anything. Okay. So I wrote Cretans. The scarf is something was given to me for Christmas by my sister, Pink Floyd. Right? So let's open it up. And we'll start... Reading, I'm not sure if you could see it, but they're two lovers. It's Donovan, my protagonist, and his girlfriend, Sakata. He's actually married, but they have an open relationship. How was your day at work? He Eskimo kissed her. Me? I burned a couple of burgers and dropped some fries. Other than that, I'm okay. She held Donovan's hands. Donovan pulled her close, and started slow dancing and singing. By the way, they're in the middle of a street, underneath the street light, late at night. Okay, he starts singing. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You'd be like heaven to touch. I want to hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived, and I thank God I'm alive. You're just too be good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. That's uh, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. I, I utilize lyrics a lot. And in my book, Thermite, which I don't have a copy on me right here, um, I, I don't just rip people off. Trust me on that. Rock and roll is a religion if you study ex existential philosophy. When I took the history of rock and roll class at a community college, our textbook was written by a guy named Robert Pilkey, and the name of it was You Say You Want a Revolution, which is, you know, borrowed from the Beatles. And he borrowed from Paul Tillich, Rudolf Otto, um, existential philosophers, sociologists, etc., explaining how the reverence and inspiration of the lyrics is very similar to early... Christianity and Judaism. Um, Judaism was very lyrically oriented, by the way. And that's the way religion got passed along was 
by mouth, not by papyrus, so much because everyone didn't have it. It's like if I sing um, something like uh, We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and uh, and a what? You know, you you know what's next, but 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 this is the way people pass down teaching was through song. Okay. Anyhow, we we go into further discussion. I'm coming on eleven minutes. I just want to touch on some of these things, and I have a whole list of other stuff I want to touch on. I might do another video. I might suppress it. I might push it aside, but. You guys hang in there. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'm going to talk about my sister real quick. She was in that movie. Shout out to my sister. I just want to mention that. 